So I'll just repeat what's written here. Um, just move this so we can read the whole, so that you can see the whole text if you want to take a copy of that. This uh, circuit should now keep a steady fixed current flowing through the load of one milliamp no matter what the resistance value the load offers. IC equals VB minus 0.6 over RE. So what we're saying is this part of the circuit defines the, the current. Uh, so whatever the current flowing through RE is, is always going to be the same current flowing through the load. So it says here, this will be independent of the source voltage, VCC, as long as the transistor is not saturated, so that uh, the voltage of the emitter, uh, sorry, the voltage of the collector here, has to be greater than uh, this voltage plus 0.2. So that's the kind of gap. Once you get any lower than, once this, this difference in voltage becomes really, really small, you've got a short there, and once that occurs, it's, it's the difference here before this transistor st stops behaving in the active region is about 0.2 volts so if that's 0.2 volts above the uh, the emitter voltage then the, the, the transistor becomes saturated so we'll no longer have uh, the, uh, the the transistor working in the active region so then our one milliamp will start to to uh, diverge off that and we no longer got a, a constant current source so uh, here it just re repeats that the active region should then be from VC equals the voltage source all the way down to VC equals 1.2 volts, which is at saturation. At VC 1.2 volts, the load resistance will equal, so you can calculate now by knowing that we're going to get down to 1.2 volts. If we've got 1.2 volts at the collector and 10 volts here, then this difference divided by 1 milliamps will give you the actual load resistance. Uh, that simple Ohm's law again, a, a simple voltage drop here. So we've got 10 volts minus 1.2 divided by 1 milliamp gives us 8,800 ohms. So what we're saying is, as we get closer to um, 1.2 volts, we the uh, transistor will start to saturate, and it'll saturate when that uh, load resistance is approximately 8,800 ohms or 8.8 .8 kilo ohms. So, as I repeat here, so in theory we should see a steady 1 milliamp current for any load resistance between 0 and 8,800 ohms. Now, just to think of this um, in, an, in, in a clearer way, maybe a helpful, more helpful way, is if we think of the transistor as limiting the flow. So, if you think of this transistor as uh, limiting the flow to 1 milliamp, no matter how much voltage we set the, uh, the collector voltage to, so no matter what uh, the collector voltage is, then the transistor will only allow one milliamp to flow. Uh, so although we can increase the collector voltage, so electrons are under greater electromotive force, if you, if, if you want to think of it that way, the transistor acts like a bottleneck, and it's only going to allow one milliamp to get through. So uh, in other words, one milli coulombs of electrons per second only can pass through. So it's like it's a, a bottleneck and it's only allowing one, one current to go through and that's one milliamps. And that is, again, defined, you know, the, the, the valve, if you like, is defined by the, uh, the emitter resistor here and the, uh, the voltage drop at, at the uh, emitter. So defining those two fixes the, the current. So basically that's how it works. So what we'll do, it, we want to really confirm that um, this load here will go from... Uh, zero up to 8.8k, and we want to see how closely uh, that will that will work in reality. So we we expect to see a one milliamp current there across that whole load uh, from zero ohms up to 8.8 kilo ohms. So we're going to construct the circuit on a breadboard and just confirm that the real numbers match these uh, uh, calculated 8.8 kilo ohms which is the point that the transistor enters saturation with one milliamp then no longer maintained. So that's what we should see. So here's what we're going to build. Uh, as I say, it's just, it's just three components, uh, including the, the load, which is the decade box. So what we've got is we've got a potentiometer, 10K potentiometer, 
we've got a decade box which we can we can uh, change from naught up to uh, eight or, you know naught to one meg meg decade box here so we can we can jump in we can jump through ranges of 1k all the way up to 8k if we want to we got uh, an ammeter an inline ammeter here so we can measure the current that's going through uh, through this this collector path and then at the emitter we've got a we've got a, a voltmeter across the emitter resistor so that we can see that the one volt is maintained so uh, when we wire this up we can then go through the decade box go from zero to 1000 to 2000 to 3000 to 4000 up to 9 10000 and we can then see if the the uh, the milliamp is maintained and the one volt is maintained and it should be until we get saturation so that's what we expect to see so let's let's go ahead and look at the uh, the lab the quick lab here and just verify that that's what we do see for this current source